So what I'm driving today is a 1978 Datsun 280Z. It is one of the three horsemen of Nissan's legendary S30 lineup, and together they change sports cars as we know them. Yes, this is the 280Z. It is the younger brother to the legend that is the 240Z and the footnote that is the 260Z. More than just classic sports cars, these Zs put Japanese cars on a whole new level. Disclaimer, I don't know if it's Datsun or Datsun or however you wanna pronounce it, but I'm gonna say it my way and if you're upset about it, you can tell me in the comments. Unsurprisingly, after World War II, us Americans weren't huge fans of Japanese products, and cars were no exception. See, after the war, the US controlled Japanese automobile production, which made it difficult to expedite the recovery of the Japanese auto industry. As the years went by and the restriction, restrictions listened? As the years went by and the restrictions lessened, the auto manufacturers from the land of the rising sun began to gain back ground, but it was largely domestic. But it was still difficult to get big sales in the US. Any cars of theirs that were found on our shores were usually mocked as being cheap junk. They needed an edge to expand their enterprises, and so they found one. The Japanese saw the need for a reliable and efficient car for the average American. And so with this mission in mind, the Japanese automakers set out to perfect the manufacturing process so that the cars they made were cost effective and that their internal design and components would outlast anything that America was producing at the time. How the Japanese automakers revolutionized the manufacturing process is a fascinating story, but it is also a long one. So I've linked to an amazing podcast from This American Life that touches on the subject. I highly recommend it. And soon the cars coming out of these factories were doing things that no American car could do, like start every morning, and for significantly cheaper. But again, these cars were being stereotyped. To choose a Japanese car was a bland choice, one made by your wallet. They were econo boxes. But then everything changed. Enter stage left, the Datsun 240Z. Brought to the US in 1970, the Datsun was tailor-made to impress an American audience. Tasked with establishing the Datsun name on this side of the pond, Yutaka Katayama, more fondly known as Mr. K, was looking for something that captured the imagination of the Americans. The 240 was modern. It had an overhead cam, 2.4 liter, straight six engine, with either a four or five speed manual transmission or a three speed automatic. It had fancy disc brakes up front and sophisticated independent suspension. Indeed, it was a legitimate competitor for anything being produced at the time, foreign or domestic. Datsun wisely kept the price low, undercutting popular sports cars price tags while also making them sweat on road and track. And perhaps the most important part these cars were still Japanese-level reliable, officer. Cars at that time were already spotty as far as reliability went, and once you stepped into the sports car world, you entered a whole new level of dodginess. So when Japan introduced a sports car that were gonna run the same way any of their already established cars would, it was a whole new ballgame. Fast forward to the end of this Z car era and you get this car, the 1978 280Z. It was the last model year for this Z generation. Named the 280 for the bump and displacement up to 2.8 liters, this car gained a little power, a little weight, and a little sophistication. There are a few cosmetic differences between this and the 240, most notably the 
rather unattractive government mandated five mile an hour bumpers. And this one is fuel injected, which is a big thumbs up in my book. How is it to drive today? It's lovely. It's surprisingly lovely. I'm sure it may come as no surprise to some of you, but I haven't had the ability to drive a lot of older cars. In fact, this is the oldest car I've driven. And yet, it feels very tight, very composed in here. The suspension and steering are as much of a darling in here today as it would have been when it left the factory. This is my longest stint with manual steering, and other than requiring a little elbow grease at low speeds, it's not a problem at all. And once you get up and going, there is zero play here. I mean, every input has a direct correlation with what's going on in the front wheels. Whee! Ah! Whee! Oh my gosh, I... Ah! And there's very little body roll for an old car. The suspension is nice and comfortable out on the road, and then once you feed it into a corner, you get this lovely progression as the car settles in for the curve. Now, you're not gonna be blowing anyone's doors off in a straight line in this thing. New, the 280 made 170 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, and I'm willing to bet a few horses have escaped the pen over the years. But weighing in at 2,800 pounds, it feels sufficiently quick, but that's enough numbers. Let's just take a moment and look at it. I mean, what a great shape. You've got the long hood and the sharp rear end that comes to a point. It's breathtaking. I mean, no wonder the Z's sold like crazy. It's so good looking that if you follow the modern Z's, the 350 and the 370, you can see exactly where they came from. You get a whiff of Ferrari Daytona, Toyota 2000 GT, Jaguar E-Type with this car. And that's a lot for your money. Now, I keep saying sports car, but that's, that doesn't feel right to me. It really behaves more like a GT car, a lot like the Maserati that I drove. Yeah, it's a lot of fun in the corners and it can handle itself in the tight sections, but it feels really at home at highway speeds. You sit this thing at 2,500 RPM, 60, 65 miles an hour, and it'll eat miles up. Even me, a spoiled millennial, could road trip this thing with minimal complaint. So where does that take us? Well, undoubtedly, the first Z cars were transformative for the automotive world. They showed us Yankees exactly where we could stick that idea of Japanese tin boxes. But this car extends beyond its history. Today, it continues to be a performer, ready at your beck and call. And this, the 280, yeah, it's not the original. The 240 gets that glory, but I wouldn't want to own one. It's a collector's item, an art piece. And as a carbureted car, it would make me dread being its owner. This is the Z you can drive. You don't have to be so nervous about the whole process. It's usable, and for all intents and purposes, it's the same car. I love it, and other people love it. I keep getting waves and smiles. I've never felt cooler. So I like this car, a lot. How much? Well, my grandfather was the one who was kind enough to lend me the car for the video, so I will speak directly to him. Hey, Grandpa, I called dibs. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to do so. I've got more exciting stuff coming up soon and I can't wait to share it with you. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button to let me know. And what did you think? I had a blast driving the 280. It is a gorgeous car, but maybe you disagree. Do you prefer the look of the modern Z cars? Do you think the 240 would be the better car to own over the 280? Let me know. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next video, and keep driving.